Today I'm going to play around with the Tiger Wrap and show you just one of the techniques that I've talked about in the past. But I'm going to do it uh, on videotape. Um, I'm going to cut, put color preserver on this raw nylon thread. I've already got um, green, yellow, and black laid in the under wrap. Already done all my burnishing. Now I'm going to color preserve it. But I'm not going to color preserve the whole thing. I'm kind of going for a um, camouflage type effect. I've done this before in browns and I think it'll work just as good in greens. So I'm going to take a very thin solution of color preserver and i got to get my glasses on here. And I'm just going to hit certain sections. Let's say uh, maybe four sections here on the top. Doesn't have to be um, all the same. Can be bigger, smaller in different areas. Doesn't matter. It's just that you're kind of working for an effect. Now I do it this way just so that I kind of remember where I did it. Because I will be putting a second coat on later on today. And this will give me an idea of how I laid the first coat if it clears up too much. I'm kind of turning the rod part way and I'm going to go in between where I did on the zero axis. Maybe a little bit bigger spots there. Now I'm on the 180 axis and I'm going to go back to basically four spots. They can be really ununiform or they can be real uniform. I did it once before with a, a needle and made it painstakingly uniform and actually even let some of the blotches touch each other. But I'm doing this this way just so it makes a good example. So you can see what I've done here. Around the whole rod. Take a little of the excess off so it doesn't run or drip. So that's exactly what I'm going to do for the, the first coat of color preserver. I will try to go back in a little while and go back over those same spots. Now, you know what, I'm going to make them a little bigger. Um, the reason being is anything that I'm not putting color preserver on is going to turn very, very dark when I do my final layer. Um, my top wrap of the tiger. So I'm kind of making these a little bigger so the dark areas aren't quite as big. I really want to see the colors of, of the tiger wrap that I've created. And um, only the areas where I put color preserver am I going to be able to see these colors. So that's about what I'm doing here. I'll uh, take pictures when I do the, the, the next coat, probably in an hour or two hours. In this heat it should go pretty quick. Alright, so that's it for right now. I'll color preserve the rest of the stuff. I've got a nice little uh, weave going here and um, I'm doing the under wrap of the guides in nylon yellow too. I'll be back. Okay, I think it's time to put on the second coat of uh, color preserver. And I'm going to do another little experiment while I'm at it. Um, or at least show you what my plan is. First, let's do the tiger wrap. Again, I'm going to just try to go over the same areas that I was on. 
you can almost see it. I don't know if you can see there's shiny spots where I put color preserver before. I can see it up close. I don't know if you can see it on the videos. See there, there, and there. And then there, 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 and there. So I uh, will try to match them as best I can. Doesn't matter. I just want what I want is to create these blotchy areas. I think I posted a tutorial or pit pictorial of this same matter in the past. And um, it actually worked out really good. It was the best, uh, what do you call it, camouflage that I'd ever done. It was a brown type camouflage. It really came out nice. Anyway, the only reason I'm doing this is to show you just another possible technique that you can apply to your uh, thread work. It doesn't necessarily have to be a tiger. It could be guides. It could be anything. If you just want a little different look or something to experiment with, um, there's always room for you know, different ways of doing things. This one seems, in a tiger situation, to do a really good job of um, making it more of a camouflage type situation. I put a little one in there when you when I turned the video off the last time right in the center because that's on the zero axis. If you'll notice it kind of continued to bleed off of where I had put the color preserver into other parts of the tiger but still left a lot of it what we call raw or what I call raw. So We'll see what it comes out with. Okay that's that's what I'm doing on that. Now something else here I, I'm gonna have to move the camera a little bit see if I can zoom it in. You see this weave. This weave right here. It's a kind of a lingcod with, uh, I call it a skeleton lingcod because parts of it look like they're skeleton under the skin. Anyway, um, it's your basic lingcod shape and those of you that know the California lingcod know that it's a blotchy, um, spotty looking critter. It looks pretty nice just this way, but I, you could either do it, put spots in with thread work or something I'm going to try to do on this one. The brown, the tannish brown here that you see is actually a raw thread. I put a coat of color preserver on it, actually two coats of color preserver on it, and now I'm going to take the end of my uh, pointer here, and I'm just going to press different areas around that, that color. What I'm trying to do is get a similar effect that um, I got with this this other system that I'm working on the tiger. Don't know if it's going to work. Hope it doesn't screw up my um, weave, but I'm trying to find a way that we can put spots or blotches onto things without having to do all the delicate thread work. You know, doing the delicate thread work is nice, but all those ins and outs create a, a whole list of problems. Anyway, we'll see when I get to doing the finished part of this, how that works out, um, and then I'll try to videotape that. I sure hope I don't have to cut that thing off. <laughs> okay, we'll talk to you more later. Back at the table again today. Uh, Going to put the finish, first coat of finish, which I've thinned a little bit with acetone <clears throat> on this tiger wrap and this weave. Now the tiger wrap if you remember just a few seconds ago I showed you 
that I put color preserver in a blotchy pattern all around it. Some parts are preserved and some parts aren't. When I put the finish on, you'll see what that ends up being, um, what, what that ends up doing to the wrap itself. And on the uh, weave, which is a lingcod, I'm going to move it over a little bit here so you can see it. It may end up getting torn off. Uh, it really came out nice and tight and everything else. I did very little excess work on it. It's a, like a skeleton lingcod. Now, as you know, most lingcod are either brownish or greenish. This is kind of in between. But the one marked thing that they do, they have, is like spots and blotches along the side. Now you can do that with thread movement. It just makes the, the wrap a, a hell of a lot longer. But in this case, I'm trying something new. I put three coats of color preserver on this, and then I went through with a really sharp lint pick. This is what I used to pick the lint out of the finish on the rods. And all I did was poke it in. Uh, in fact, I'm going to poke it right here in, in the center of this wrap. And you may be able to see what it does. Anyway, I, I'm, I poked it in in hopes of getting kind of a blotchy situation with that. Now, it may end up, I'll end up tearing all of this off. I sure hope not because there's a lot of work here. And this is my giveaway <coughs> giveaway rod <coughs> excuse me for this year's charter so we'll see how that ends out uh, if it doesn't have blotches it'll still be nice wrap if it does have blotches it could be better and if it has too big of blotches it'll go bye bye so let's see how this works out and I'll take pictures after I put the finish on before I put it on the dryer now I've applied the finish and as you can see there are light patches and dark patches. Um, in the past this has worked out really good for the camouflage idea. We'll find out on this one. My final wrap will be uh, a dark green with three sacrificials. Also my idea with the lingcod, let me see if I can get a good close-up picture of it. I didn't overdo poking it with the sharp implement to break through the CP, but I think I did it enough to give me an idea that this technique will work for certain types of fishes. As you can, I hope you can see through the video that there are little dark spots where I poke that sharp implement, and I assume that as this finish gets a little deeper into the thread maybe the spots will even become more prominent. I'm glad I didn't overdo it because I'm I really didn't want to cut this weave off and then have to take off the tiger and everything else. So um, it at least has shown me that this might work and help with some types of fishes that have blotches, soft blotches and, and um, you know, just need something a little less hard than a just big black dot. Anyway, it's a thought. And it might work with other techniques too. It might work on the guides. Who knows? It could work in the tiger wraps. These are all things that just run around in my head and I have to experiment with. I'd like to share it with you guys in case you want to take it another step or two further. So... The next time I turn this on, it'll be for the uh, tiger wrap and to show the uh, final uh, over wrap. Be back then. Here we are with the uh, tiger wrap again that I did that blotch CP on. Um, I've got it all laid up. This is the final over wrap. I did something different because in the bottom I had um, three threads, all size A. On the top I'm using size D, and I'm only using um, I'm using 
one sacrificial which is also a D thread. So we'll see how this turns out. If it doesn't turn out to my liking, I'm going to cut it all off, do it again, only next time with two size D threads. So we might get a double experiment out of this. Um, don't know, but I'm getting ready to cut it now. And I'm going to cut it and unravel it right in front of you so you can see how it turns out. Here's a little thread I put in to help me get my sacrificial. And like I've said before in my other videos, I like to uh, turn the rod and pull the sacrificial out. Starting to see some pattern underneath. Doesn't look like a bad pattern. More stripey than I usually like. But still a pretty nice pattern. It's a dark green that I have that I'm keeping on top. And I'm removing the black size D thread. Kind of an interesting circumstance here. Oh, that's because of the blotching. But you'll get to see it a little better as I go. Very interesting patterning. The blotching effect kind of ties in a little bit with the um, darker green and black that's in the under wrap. Very interesting. This is something that I hadn't expected. But, like I said, that's what experimenting is all about. See, I have a little mistake here, so I'm going to show you a little tip. Um, I don't like it when the upper wrap, the threads, become too close together. And that's what happened here. There's two ways to fix it. You can take a pick and run it in between to try to space it, which eh, it took care of it pretty good there. Actually removed it completely. The other thing I'll do is cut a piece of the sacrificial thread and lay it there to keep the gap right. Something I didn't do that I usually do before I start pulling the sacrificial thread is I usually leave the top wrap on for a few minutes, maybe, maybe even an hour or two, so that it really gets a chance to set into the finish below it and makes it a lot less uh, likely that I'll interrupt the threads too much and cause that kind of a problem that I just had. It's going pretty good. Very interesting results. Very interesting results. Had I, I will probably keep this, but had I gone with uh, a darker color. Had I used a brown as my main thread on top, I would have a real camouflage look here. Um, but this is this is coming out pretty good, and I kind of like it, so I'm gonna probably just keep it the way it is. I'll know better when I get it all off and really take a slow look at it. Hope you're able to see it. Kind of looks like it from what I can see in the camera here. But we're trying to get this stuff off, so when it's all off, we'll take a good long look. Slow look at it and see what's coming. Funny, when you do these tigers, you sure waste a lot of thread. Um, I've often thought maybe I should save it and use it for inlay work, but as much thread as I have already, I probably don't need to do that. Anyway, looking at this, very, very interesting. 
you have the pattern that is involved with in the actual tiger part of the operation but there's also this um, second aspect to it that has to do with the color preserver and no color preserver very very interesting I'll bet it's really gonna pop when I put the finish on top so let me do it real slow a 360 here on it on it for you I'm gonna try moving the camera a little bit just do a good 360 view you can see the areas where the blotching is occurring very very interesting and like I said had I come with a darker color maybe a black or a brown on top there'd be more of a camouflage type effect but this is really unique so I'm going to leave it just like it is happens to be the rod I'm giving away on my eight day long range trip so somebody's going to be happy and um, let me go back over here again and show you the the uh, I'm going to close close up a little bit and show you the ling cod uh, can't get can't get it as close as I want because it it blurs back it out again there's the ling cod and you take a look at the cheek plate on the ling cod and there's some faint blotches there that was the other experiment I was doing with um, color preserving nylon thread and then poking it with a needle it came out okay lots of experimentation needed with that but uh, it might be one of the answers to make the blotches and patterns that some fish have on a fish without doing a lot of thread movement just a thought something to experiment with okay probably we'll get some pictures of this when the whole thing's finished and uh, publish the stuff on the internet Gonna take some more shots of the tiger wrap, seeing if I can make it move. Trying to do it without too many shakes, so I'm perched precariously on this uh, tripod, trying to move it really slow. But after three cups of coffee, maybe it's not <laughs> so slow.